School buildings may have closed down for the rest of the school year, but school is still in session, remotely. How is that going? What's it like teaching and offering classes by Zoom or Skype? We set up a Zoom meeting with Mark Tashin, the headmaster of Burn Burton Academy, Meg Kenny, the assistant head of school, and John Graff, a social studies teacher at Burn Burton, who is also the chairman of that department, to find out. Weeks now. We, we've been deep into online learning right from the get-go. The, the day after we shut down daily operations, we were prepared to, to launch online synchronous and asynchronous learning with our students. And, um, and I think it's been kind of an incredible uh, and interesting and challenging experience, but, but incredible in a lot of good ways. So with that, I, I, I think Meg and John, you two should talk about what we've been doing. Sure. I, I think, Andrew, one of the things that we, we did was when, when things started to become apparent that COVID-19 was going to impact our area, while school was still open, we had uh, put together a team and our academic leadership, which John Graff is a part of as a department chair, we started to brainstorm and develop kind of a skeleton plan for what we would do if school had to be shut down and what that online learning would look like or a remote learning plan would look like. So we decided that um, we immediately assessed our students' access to robust Wi-Fi and cell phone data capability and identified uh, a pocket, pockets of students that were gonna need some support there, either troubleshooting getting more reliable Wi-Fi or data or identifying students that weren't easily gonna fit into an online mode. So we had all that, that information before school even shut down. Which, and then we also decided we would come up with what our online learning day would look like. And what that is, is we've kept our same schedule. Um, so students meet remotely with all of their classes each day, but in a more abbreviated fashion. So instead of our 85 minute blocks, we have 40 minute blocks. And then at the end of that, there's a, a time period that we're calling office hours where students can um, check in with students. And we're, we're primarily using um, Google platforms because that's what a lot of teachers in the school were using. At the time, Zoom wasn't free when we made this skeleton plan. So we went with that with some consistency and that was sort of the baseline tool people were gonna use. And Google Meet, Google Hangout, Google Docs, things like that, all connected to our learning management system that we already had in place. And then teachers are going from there and using other tools. And John can talk a little bit about that, some of what's happening in the social studies department. But we're finding um, a blend of synchronous and asynchronous experiences and then supporting individual students in, in really creative ways. So we have a team of, that we call our CARS team, our Care for At-Risk Students team, which you, typically we meet once a week. Well, we've already had three meetings. We have our fourth tomorrow in the short amount of time where we're able to identify from feedback from teachers and counselors and our mental health professionals on who's struggling, who's not engaging. And, and we're doing some real intense direct outreach and problem solving with, with those kids. And I'm happy to say it's a really small number of students who are struggling. And the struggles that were the challenges really vary from sort of the isolation of like, how do I deal with this isolation? How do I deal with being with my family, competing for internet, um, you know, making sure they're connecting, finding ways to connect remotely with peers and other adults. With um, Mark and Meg, that it's it's been a pretty impressive transition, um, and you know the fact that we've been up and running now for two weeks, you know, two weeks um, is 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 really amazing. And the kids' response overall has been really positive as well. Um, I think, fortunately. There was a lot of things working in our favor. So much of the kind of the workflow piece of like um, getting information out to students and students, um, you know, turning turning in papers has was more and more become more and more digital in the past couple of years. So a lot of that hasn't changed. You know, students, ha you know, uh, for the vast majority of students who have good, you know, who have access to the internet can access our 
online learning platform. They can see what's being assigned. They can turn in their work. Um, that's stuff we were already we were doing even when we were all meeting in a classroom. Um, so that 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 foundation uh, made it easy then to um, you know start to ch figure out ways to be creative about holding class. Um, and what I've stressed in my classes and what I've stressed to my department is the focus really is on you know keeping it simple, especially at the start, um, less being more and really doing our best to try to preserve uh, that kind of classroom culture that was so important in our classes before we all ended up in you know, our own homes. Uh, and so those 40 minute meetings allow us to do that, that you know, having a you know, conversation like this, having the classes meet virtually um, and being able to see each other, being able to hear each other, uh, being able to answer questions, being able to deliver a little a short lesson, um, you know, deliver a, a lecture, um, you know, have a debate, break, break the students up into actual a bunch of different groups like like we're having right now. So I, I've divided my class into five or seven different little groups, and I can um, jump in and out of the different chats and you know have a little a small group interaction with them and be able to be able to talk to them, um, and, you know, in a, in, a, in a in a smaller group and more personally. Those things have allowed us to preserve that culture, um, that connection, um, which I think is more important than any less, you know, in particular lesson that I'm going to deliver. Um, and so that, that's gone, gone really well um, in the past two weeks. Uh, one of the things that students and teachers are figuring out is that um, there's, you know, there's ways to maximize your, your, your bandwidth. Um, so for, you know, it, some kids are just using audio um, or, you know, using video only at uh, specific times. Um, you know, I've, I've had all my students in, in my classes have been able to access the class, um, you know, via the internet and been on, part of this online learning. Um, and they're, you know, they're sometimes <coughs> their voices are a little, little crackly. Sometimes mine, mine is, uh, I found that if I'm going to present something to them, I want to turn off my, you know, my camera. So it's not taking up bandwidth and you know, the bandwidth can be the presentation, the slideshow that's being projected is, is the thing that's you know, coming to them most clearly. Uh, so you know, it's a small sample, uh, but for my classes, it's been really successful um, and kids have been able to access and participate. I think we did was we um, sent out one of our, our maintenance personnel in a bus to different locations where we knew the Wi-Fi signals were maybe not as strong and did some tests to see, okay, so if he parked in this particular parking lot, say in Land Grove or Londonderry or Peru or Paulet, um, you know, what was the signal like there just to get a sense. And, and we were then able to help students figure out through some of the work that the town of Manchester did where Xfinity, where they could access some of that. So I know we do have a few students who are sitting in their car sometimes when they have a, a, a class that has a high need for bandwidth close to a building where they can access the Wi-Fi. This has happened deep into the school year. So we have all this momentum. We have all these relationships built and it, the, it, it's a, we are able to continue the momentum. Um, I will tell you personally, it's killing me not to have people around. I'm, I'm not set up for social isolation. I miss everybody and I miss the daily energy and I know I'm not alone in that. And so I can't wait for the, the day when we have 750 students and 150 faculty and staff back here together doing what we do well and, and doing really what, what we love. Um, so it's it's good for now but but i i can't wait for for everybody coming back together as a real community not just a virtual community remote learning may be working out okay but the traditional classroom instructional approach is one all of them look forward to getting back to as soon as possible all three are hopeful that graduation exercises maybe in june but if not then sometime later over the summer will be held to honor the class of 2020. For the GNF TV News Project, I'm Andrew McKeever.